Before I begin, let me start with some foundation. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 includes two games and a movie, released for $60 in 2013 on the PS3. Kingdom Hearts 2.5 includes two games and a movie, released for $60 in 2014 on the PS3. Kingdom Hearts 2.8 includes two games and a movie, released for $60 in 2017 on the PS4. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 includes four games and two movies, released for $50 in 2017 on the PS4. Kingdom Hearts The Story So Far includes six games and three movies, released for $40 in 2018 on the PS4. Kingdom Hearts All-in-One Package includes seven games and three movies, released for $100 in 2019 on the PS4. If you buy every single bundle, not that you should or need to, the total cost comes out to $370. This does not include tax, discounts, or costs for the original games on their original consoles. Out of all of these deals, the last one, the all-in-one package, is the best. It's the same thing as the story so far, but it also includes Kingdom Hearts 3, which is why there's a $60 increase, as well as exclusive digital bonuses. If you haven't gotten into the series by January 2019, then get this digital bundle. It is the best deal. There's nothing else to it. Just, just that. Again, all of these bundles were made in the name of convenience. Trying to get new fans into the series and allowing old fans to keep all their games on the same console. So let the record show that I understand that, and I get that, and I respect Square for doing it. October 5th, 2017 marked the day that Square Enix announced the fifth and newest Kingdom Hearts bundle, the story so far. It includes the 1.5 plus 2.5 and 2.8 discs together for $40. It is also a US exclusive. This announcement is really the reason why I'm making this video, because it's a problem and needs to be thoroughly talked about. I also made a video ranting about Kingdom Hearts bundles a while ago. I think it was mainly about the irrelevance of 1.5 plus 2.5, if I recall correctly. I wouldn't recommend watching that video one bit, as it's extremely outdated and I probably was just fed on emotions. Um, but I'm mentioning it just because, you know, if people want to go back and watch it, and want to see my perspective from, I think it was over a year ago, then you're more than welcome to. But I have no clue if what I'm saying in this video contradicts or parallels with stuff in that video, but for for this video's sake, I'm, I'm not going to reference that whatsoever. I don't care about that video, but yeah. Anyway, so lastly, as Dean Weiss has pointed out to me publicly and privately, there is a big difference between a collection of games and a bundle of games. For the sake of this video and its discussion, I'm going to be referring to them as the same thing, just so people can casually say collection and bundle without it being a big deal and the difference itself is kind of tiny in the grand scheme of things. With all that out of the way, here we go. During the lifespan of the PS3 versions of 1.5 and 2.5, the Kingdom Hearts community as a whole would recommend said games to anyone trying to get into the series. $120 for four full games and two movies was a really good deal, especially for this series. It was even better if you had discounts or bought the pre-owned copies of the game a few months or maybe even weeks later. Note that when I say full games, I'm not talking about games that you'd only play through once and just jump from level to level. Each of these games will require your undivided attention for gameplay, unlockable abilities, hidden treasure, and of course, the convoluted plot. According to GameLinks.com, the four playable games in these two bundles separately average to 135 hours of gameplay. And for consistency's sake, the average playtime of 2.8 is 20 hours, according to HowLongToBeat.com. Both of the links to these websites will be in the description below if you want to check it out yourself. The point I'm trying to make here with the playtimes is that these games were worth their $60 full price on launch day from 2013 to 2017. Currently, you can get each collection set pre-owned under $20 at your local game store. So again, yes, you definitely do get your money's worth. My problem isn't, oh, it's too expensive, nor is it, oh, it's too cheap, at the base of it all. So I'm just wanting to get this cleared out of the way before some people take to the comments and say, stop complaining, they're just making it cheaper. I know that they are. Anyways, back to the point. The PS3 Kingdom Hearts bundles were fine, and so was 2.8 on the PS4. They were necessary for fans to get caught up with the series, since, as I've mentioned before in a video, the series is renowned for having important games on random systems and consoles. 
they turned 11 games plus a gameplay demo for Kingdom Hearts 3 into a $180 present for the fans, and that was perfect. Notably, the PS4 released in between Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5's release. Whether or not Square Enix was aware of Sony's next-gen console is beyond me, but I would personally find it pretty petty when you're making a PlayStation exclusive and Sony won't give you a heads up of, hey, we got a new one coming out in a year, just wait, but it's whatever. If I was Square Enix, I probably would have just delayed the bundle for next gen, which was only a couple months away, since that's what they did for the two bundles later. Uh, but Square is known for making bizarre marketing choices, and yeah, but I digress. Later in 2017, after 2.8's release, they release another PS4 bundle of 1.5 and 2.5 called 1.5 plus 2.5. Content-wise, it's the exact same as the PS3 variations. The only difference would be performance rates and the actual application itself on the PS4 menu. While these things are what qualify games as for ports, you need to know that they would be considered a port of a port since 1.5 and 2.5 were porting their respective games onto the PS3. Point is, they released the $120 two bundles on another console that came out the same year as 1.5 for $50. New fans of 2013 to 2017 got cucked out of $70. Sure, $70 can considerably be pocket cash over the course of four years, but new fans, the people who these bundles were mostly for, lost money, and I feel bad for them. If I recall, during the week that Kingdom Hearts 3 got an official release date that delayed it to 2019, Square Enix also announced that they'd be releasing a digital bundle of Kingdom Hearts 3, 2.8, 2.5, and 1.5 for $100. This is the all-in-one package bundle that I talked about before that's releasing for $100. Currently, it is the best deal on the market in terms of which Kingdom Hearts bundles to buy and own. Up until this point, 1.5 plus 2.5 and 2.8 were not sold together. They were two separate discs that sold for $110 together on their respective launch days. That's $110 for five games. The Kingdom Hearts 3 gameplay demo, which some like to call a separate game even though it's only two hours long, and three movies, versus the $180 that the 2013-2017 new fans spent for the PS3 variations of 1.5 and 2.5 and the PS4 pack of 2.8. So there you have the $70 loss that I mentioned earlier. If you fit into that latter group of people who also laid $50 down for 1.5 plus 2.5, then you pay $230 versus the easier $110. Suddenly, that $70 loss became a $120 loss. That might sting a bit more now, and when you think about it content-wise, what did you lose $120 for? It's all the same product. You lost $120 because a game went from the PS3 to the PS4. I can't imagine how many people would find that logically fair for the consumer. Personally, I find that a perfect example of poor and bad marketing. As I said earlier, October 5th, 2017 marked the day that Square Enix announced yet another bundle called The Story So Far. This one included 1.5 plus 2.5 and 2.8 for $40. So for the people who have bought, or bought in, whatever, the previous four bundles that we as a community encouraged to do so from 2013, you've lost $190 under five years, and as I stated at the beginning of this video, that does not include tax or discounts or anything else that kind of fits into that. For the people who only bought 1.5 plus 2.5 and 2.8, that we as a community encouraged you to do so from 2017, then you've lost $70 under two years again, not including tax or discounts. If you buy the story so far and Kingdom Hearts 3, you might lose a couple bucks worth for tax, but that's about it. There may really only be dimes in between your cut loss here, but if you get those games separately rather than, than the Jarrett, wow. If you get those games separately, rather than the January bundle, which is the all-in-one package, then you lose out on that free digital exclusive bonuses that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. If you bought 1.5, 2.5, 2.8, 1.5 plus 2.5, the story so far, and plan on buying Kingdom Hearts 3, then compared to January's deal, you've lost $230. You also lose more money when you look at each variable of what games are the same versus which ones I bought, versus which ones I should have bought. And because of how much variables can play into this, I won't go into every single result, but I will say it only gets worse from $120 and can range up to around the $300 range. 
For collectors and the new fans of 2013 to 2017, I'm at a loss for words. I'm sorry that we as a community encouraged you to get these bundles. We honestly thought that they would be the best ways to jump into the series. Now while it's not an excuse, there wasn't any sort of promise from Square Enix in 2013 that they would remake the same bundle at least three times for a cheaper price. Yes, pre-owned versions and price drops were kind of a guarantee, but new collections were not, and for that I apologize. Well, whew, if you made it this far to the end of the video, thanks for sticking around. If you want to see my on-the-spot discussion with people on Twitter, the entire Twitter uh, thread is in the description for you guys to check yourself uh, for you guys to check for yourself. As well as those two websites that I mentioned earlier, they're still in the description. And uh, yeah, as far as I can tell, no one blocked me or anything from that Twitter debunkle, and I didn't block anyone either. So, uh, but yeah, you guys can go through that, see what I said, see what other people said. Um, you can make your own opinions on the whole bundle stuff, but this video is just my organized two cents of, <laughs> two cents. It's just my organized thoughts and opinions on the whole bundle rant. Now, while I do appreciate Square Enix for trying to make the series cheaper and more convenient for fans, it, it, it is a bit disrespectful for the fans that we got into the series from 2013 to 2017 when they paid more than three times the price for all of the bundles for three years, for, for, for actually three to four years rather than just now. Yeah, anyway guys, again, thanks for watching. I hope that this kind of clears some things up on, you know, what I was going through on Twitter and just my thoughts overall on the whole thing. But uh, yeah, so anyway guys, peace.